Okay. I know you've been with me for a previous session, and um, good morning um, for myself. My name is Lisa Vernon. And with me is Phil Walsworth, he's the Vice Principal for Primary. So we're both going to speak to you today from a primary and a secondary perspective. And how many of you in here have children who are primary students joining us? Any secondary? Excellent. And then have we got somewhere we've got a mix of both perhaps? A primary and a secondary? Okay, well, that's excellent. All right, so that's why we do this presentation in that manner. It does have to get everybody in the room to sort of visit the thing. So, we are here to talk to you today about curriculum and assessment. So, you've probably seen this before um, in terms of the vision for the school. Bear with us. All right, so have you seen this in the previous session? Did they show you this? No, okay. So our vision is there um, and it's something that you will see a lot throughout the academic year. Um, and how are students to inspire, create and excel in the world that is, so they can help create the world that will be. Phil and I's role here at school is about student outcomes. Okay, and that uh, vision for us is very, you know, it's very important. So we make sure that students are gaining everything that they need academically and socially as well, but again, everything that they need to be able to, to leave here, their end journey, be the best version of themselves. We've got three pillars here at work. So we've got the science of learning. You may have seen some of the um, sort of work as you come into school. We've got it all on the walls um, and it's very much driven by research and what happens in the classroom. Um, our next presentation is teaching and learning, and then we'll go through that detail. Our social enterprise pillar and our student agency and innovation. So these aspects here, you will keep coming back to throughout the academic year. We just wanted to make sure that we showed you these again um, while, as we start. So there we are. I hate that picture. <laughs> um, that's us. All right. You will receive emails from us in terms of reporting throughout the year um, and other bits and pieces. So we look after cat ball testing at school. We look after the GLs. So things like that, you will see our names. Please just drop us an email if you've got any questions. I always say, and I'm sure that Phil would agree, if you've got a question about something, um, examination data related, when you do drop offs, if you're available to come in, if you come into the secondary drop off area and you have a question, ask for me. All right, and it's better to do things face to face always as much as possible. And Phil will be on the on the primary side as well. Okay, we don't bite, even though we are data geeks. Okay, we don't bite, I promise. But please do come and ask us for anything. All right, so we're going to start off then with curriculum. Obviously, you've signed up here to work. This is a British curriculum school. So we just kind of want to start the presentation in terms of, you know, all of the, the curricula across divide that we offer is strong. But we are a British curriculum school. And, we, you know, all of them have got features that stand out all really positive. And um, as you know, the British curriculum, it is a popular um, area that, you know, is worldwide recognised. It's a broad balance and student centres, includes regular national benchmarking, it culminates the International Duke's End General Certificate of Secondary, so that's the GCSE examinations. And then we move on to our A, S and A levels, and it's recognised by universities worldwide. How many of you follow us on Instagram? Okay, if you don't, please do. Okay, um, I'm sure that some of you have been looking in depth at that. We, we've had some amazing A level results. Now, a couple of weeks ago, when we gained our GCSE results last Thursday, we've done really well. Um, so we're really proud of that. But our social media is good in terms of just kind of updates for you and your child. But also we will celebrate our students as much as possible. Right, so I want to go through the other areas of curriculum, but just so you know where we are, where we're placed, and the strengths of the British. Okay, I'm going to hand you to Phil. He's going to talk through foundation stage and plan. Um, welcome everybody, uh, my name is Phil Walsworth, as Lisa mentioned, um, I'm one of the three primary vice principals at the school, and as Lisa says, uh, our role is to look over like student outcomes, progress, attainment. 
Um, so we're going to start with a national curriculum for England, uh, and we're going to start in FS, okay? So our youngest children academy, they join us uh, in nursery, uh, two years old, and they then move on to what we call the foundation stage or our early years centre. Uh, you may hear that term as well. So the early years foundation stage sets standards for learning, development and the care of all students um, from when they're very first born all the way up until they're five years old. And then obviously after that stage, they then move into what we call year one and it moves through to year two, year three, year four, year five, year six onwards. Um, it is a programme that actually starts in nursery and runs all the way through to the end of FS2. There was a new uh, statutory framework introduced in the UK in, um, and they started using that from 2021 and we also follow that as well. So in our foundation stage, there are seven areas of learning, okay, which you uh, will become familiar with, if not already, um, over the uh, coming term and year. So we have what we call prime areas. There are three. We have personal, social and emotional development which is all about students uh, looking, thinking about themselves, thinking about those friendships with others. We have physical development, which is a big focus on those gross and fine motor skills. Um, lots of links there with physical education and our PE team. We also have communication and language development, which uh, a big focus on speaking and listening skills and their understanding of that. Lots of links there to, towards our uh, English curriculum. And then we have our specific areas, which are four. So we have literacy, which is writing skills, uh, mathematics, which is early mathematical development, understanding the world, which encompasses history, geography, science, and learning about all the different cultures that are out there in the world. And then last but not least, we have our expressive arts and design, which focuses on subjects like drama, dance, uh, music, art and design technology. As we move on to the national curriculum for England for primary, so primary is uh, organised into two blocks. One block is you'll hear key stage one, which is year one and year two. And then you'll also hear key stage two, which encompasses year three, four, five and six. Sometimes you may hear lower key stage two, which will be year threes and fours and then upper key stage two, which is year five and six. Okay, so a couple of uh, bits of terminology just to get your head around that. In primary, we have what we call our specialist teachers, but we also have our class teachers. Now, I'm just looking around and I can see a couple of faces that I actually did a tour with um, in the, the pre-academic year. And I do talk about this quite a lot. Class teachers are probably the teachers you'll have most contact with. OK, uh, they are the teachers that you'll see on the door and that's where the students will spend most of their time. Specialist teachers, they will see throughout the week, but there will not be as much contact time. So for our class teachers, they will teach subjects, English, maths, science, which incorporates STEAM and technology, computing, moral, social and cultural studies and grow well as well. So moral, social, and cultural studies is very much um, all about the UAE and its heritage. Grow Well is a fantastic curriculum that we uh, introduced last year that uh, looks, it's a little bit like PSHCE in the UK. It looks about all about you as a person, how you can grow as an individual, okay? We also have projects for change, which you will see on the timetables. Those lessons encompass history, geography, art and design and technology. On the left hand side, you can see our specialist teachers. So these are subjects where students will go to or the specialist teacher will come to their class to teach these lessons. So we have Arabic, which is mandatory for all. We have Islamic, which is uh, only for our uh, Muslim families. Our non-Muslim families will not attend as Islamic. They will stay with a class teacher during those times. We have French and Spanish, which starts in year two and runs through to year six. So students will have experience of French for half a year and Spanish for half a year. We have music, which you'll see on the timetable, PE and swimming. And then also we have performing arts, okay? That's what you'll see on the, on the timetable. That encompasses uh, music, but it's, it's a drama focused, okay? And that will be in year one to really hone in on those speaking skills 
and in upper key stage two. So year five and six and year one, you will see performing arts on your timetables. Okay, not for year two, three and four. Now, just before I pass back over to uh, Lisa, Projects for Change is um, maybe something new. All of the other information on that you may have heard a little bit about before. But I'm guessing you may not have heard much about Projects for Change. It's very unique to our school. So um, it encompasses those uh, lessons that I talked about. Uh, we try and uh, create like a connected curriculum in those areas. We uh, introduce uh, new topics to students. We introduce problems. We discover, we find out what's going on in the world, and then we take action. Well, what can we share? What can we design? What can we create to have a positive impact, not only on the school, but not only in Dubai, but worldwide as well. As you can see on the right-hand side, um, it encompasses the national curriculum for, for England, social enterprise, which is our second pillar of the academy, and also sustainable development. So social enterprise, Underneath that is our UN sustainable, sustainable Development Goals, and this runs right the way through from FS all the way through into secondary as well. This underpins uh, our curriculum. You'll be hearing lots about them. Uh, students should be coming home and talking lots about them as well. Um, and um, this is a main driving force of our social enterprise pillar in the school. Last but not least, I know that's really small, but I've just given you a little snippet of a timetable, one from our foundation stage and one from uh, our primary uh, stage as well. Um, all timetables will be shared with you by uh, the end of the week, okay? Um, just really quickly, because I know it's quite small to see, you'll uh, see when the breaks are, you'll see when lunches are, you'll see the timings of the lessons, start of day, end of day. But I just wanted to point out that all of those subjects that are highlighted in green, those are specialist lessons. So that is when students will be taught by a specialist teacher, whether that be Arabic, Islamic, PE, swimming, music, performing arts. And all of the subjects that are not green are all taught by the classroom teachers. OK, so they will teach all of those subjects. As I mentioned, you'll get your timetables uh, this week, so you'll be able to have a look at when things are taking place throughout the week for your students. I'm going to pass back over to Lisa now for a bit of secondary curriculum. Okay, so obviously from primary and secondary then, we have our year six and seven transition. And I just thought, has anybody here got year six children that are we moving through? So I just wanted to put your minds at ease a little bit today because Obviously, we are a through school. We've got our primary, we've got our secondary here too. But we do an excellent job in terms of making sure that they're ready in year six um, for year seven. We've actually got, um, and you've probably seen it already, but on the, on the floors where the secondary students are, our year six area is actually there. So immediately by default, we're actually already preparing them um, to be part of the secondary school. So they like that. So that's our specialist zone. Um, you know, we, we transition them in terms of getting them to the science labs for a lesson in year seven towards the end of the year and um, having a maths lesson with the, with the core maths teachers as well. So we really do put a lot of emphasis and effort into that um, and making sure that they are comfortable and, um, you know, moving through. And we also do particular days where there'll be a secondary student at the end of year six as well. So I think that's just really important to point out. Um, because obviously the families that have joined us, we want a long relationship with you um, and we want that to continue. So um, there you go. All right, moving through then to the secondary curriculum. Um, we've talked a bit about it being broad and it being rich. OK, and we do offer academic, but a very holistic view to the child. And, and we, you know, we provide that holistic nature. So what do I mean by that? We are a school that Yes, we focus on academics. Yes, we want our students to do well in their subjects. All right, well for them. Yeah, how are they succeeding personally? But as a child and as an individual, it goes back to our vision. When they leave here and they walk out of these doors, if they've got a grade nine in maths and a grade nine in English in their GCSEs, they also need to make sure that they have the skills as a person to go out and to communicate, to collaborate, to be resilient towards others. So every our research and our, um, our 
teaching principles that the teacher and learning team will talk to you about is also making sure that across all of the classrooms, and this goes for primary as well, that we're not just knowledge, 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 how we do that and the skills that we're modeling and we're, we're really emphasizing it is so important to the, to the students. And we, we praise them where their behavior is good, but also where they are developing their own skills as well. And um, so we really want them to be broad as a person. You know, how they are and how they present themselves is, is so important to us. And um, so we offer um, social enterprise as well, which is um, a separate subject lower down the school that they do, which encompasses a business and geography and things. So you'll see that on the timetable. And uh, Lambda is part of the drama department. We have lots of student leaders here um, across the school, actually. And it's really nice that they get to have their own voice and make decisions across the school so those opportunities will be made available very soon and um, bespoke pathways so you may have seen um, in the college times um, i think it was published yesterday we had our student nadine who did who did exceptionally well in her gcses um, and nadine is actually a swimmer um, a professional swimmer or obviously we are an academy of excellence for our swimming which we're really proud of but Nadine, you know, to fit into a normal timetable was really difficult for her. She was training hard in the mornings and evenings and everything like that. So if you haven't seen that piece, please do have a read of it. But where I'm trying to get to there is that where we have students who require, you know, they might be a tennis player, which we have had here as well. We, we make sure that we accommodate their timetable so that they can do everything. You know, gone are the days in school now, you know, when I was a long time ago you know you just went to lessons and that was it everybody did the same thing this is very bespoke and we will we will work around different situations which i think is wonderful and the alternative pathways really covers um, what i've just said now the next screen doesn't look too pretty but please don't let it worry you they are three examples there of timetables and um, for our students okay now for secondary your child should have their timetable today given to them. If it's not today, it'll be first thing in the morning because obviously they will need to realise where they need to go for their lessons. They will move around every lesson in secondary. OK, so they will go from lesson to lesson and, you know, they will need to be responsible for their timekeeping and things. And I've had a question about bags and um, before we do have lockers. Um, and I do really believe in the lockers because some of those bags, if I was to pick up some of those secondary student bags and walk around for the whole day, I would be in absolute agony with my back. So please encourage them to get a padlock and they can then just pick a locker and use that as well and just get used to taking out what they need for certain times of the day. So there's the time table. So you can see the subject at the top. OK, and then it's the teacher's initials that are underneath that and then the room numbers as well. OK. But like I say, your child will get that timetable. You can go through that with them today. Right. OK, so and then we we offer loads of stuff after schools and within the curriculum as well. So I don't think I've ever worked in a school that offers as many extracurricular activities, which are ECAs as we do. And my, what I would say as parents is make the most of all what is on offer. You know, your child might fancy doing something that they've never done before. Get them involved, let them try it. You just never know. So the school, obviously we, we finish at 10 past three for secondary. Um, and I know primary, they stagger it a little bit earlier, but after school, when, our, when we have our clubs running, the only way I can describe this place is it's absolutely buzzing here at work. Um, with the excitement of our students going to do their chosen activities. Um, and it's really hard to actually get them out of the school <laughs> after them because they're all so excited. But it's it's lovely to see them when we also have um, clubs in the morning. So some of our footballers are coming in at 6 a.m., you know, when the weather's cooler and things. So it's just wonderful to see. So please do make the most of those opportunities. But there's a list there. I'm not going to read them all um, to you. And, and if I was to, if we were to write a succinct list, that would be huge, right? And it would go to, it'd be as long as this um, stage is. Okay. So we will take questions at the end. Um, people online, please stay with us. Uh, we are about to move into our assessment section. I'm going to pass you back to you, Phil. Thank you.
<laughs> okay, so that was a little bit uh, on the curriculum. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about assessment now. Uh, this may come across as a bit heavy for the very first day, uh, but please do not worry. Uh, and I know, uh, obviously, Lisa and I were talking lots uh, to you at the minute, uh, and you may be thinking to yourself, oh, I can't remember all of that. Please don't worry. There's no expectation that, the, that you have to go away and remember all this. There's no quiz at the end, or is there? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so please do not worry. We're always here available. Any questions that you have throughout the week, throughout the weeks, throughout the year, please do just ask and we can help to clarify. Okay? Uh, a couple of terms that I just want to um, uh, talk to you about is uh, progress and attainment. And this runs right the way through from FS all the way through into secondary as well. Two terms that we talk about. One is progress. Okay. So, um, and you'll hear this term quite a lot and you'll hear the term attainment as well. Progress is where students... Uh, progress throughout the year so from a starting point until an end point okay and it's really important it's our jobs to ensure that students are making that expected or above expected progress for their personalized targets and then attainment okay so that's uh, measured against year group curriculum standards okay um, so it's really important that you're aware of uh, some of the terminology that we use in FS and primary. It differs a little bit in secondary, and Lisa will talk to you about that. But we use the terms working below curriculum standards, working towards, working at, and working above, okay? But as I said, there's no expectation for you to remember any of that right now. It's just to introduce you to some of the terms that you may be hearing throughout the academic year. And they will definitely be on the reports that we, we share with you in term one, term two, and term three. Now, FS, in terms of assessment, these are all of the areas that we do assess at the school. You'll see that there are the seven areas of learning are on there. Reading, writing, mathematics, science, um, understand the world, expressive arts and design. OK, um, and there's an application that our foundation stage use called Seesaw. Um, some of you may have heard of this from your previous schools. Some of you it may be brand new. Um, this is a fantastic application which supports students' learning journey throughout their time with us. So things that we can upload are pictures, we can upload video uh, content, uh, teachers can uh, share, uh, their, teachers can share um, little messages on there to say what the students have been learning, how they've been doing in class. So it's a really important application for keeping up with how students are performing on a day-to-day -day basis in our early years uh, centre. Okay, so Seesaw is an application that you'll definitely find uh, out, that you'll find more about that application uh, throughout the week. As we move into primary, uh, we have our class teacher subjects that are assessed and then our specialist subjects that are also assessed as well. Okay, so these are subjects that I talked about earlier in terms of what we offer on our curriculum. You'll also see on there, there's an application called Learning Ladders. Okay, this is an application that is introduced in year one and moves all the way through to year six. Okay, and then in secondary, there's a, a new application, a different application that I'm sure Lisa might touch upon very briefly. So what is Learning Ladders? So it's a system, an online system. Okay, it's designed to keep everyone in touch with one another. Okay, so teachers, parents, students. So you can see exactly what has been going on within the classroom. Okay, I think that's really important. I always talk about triangle and I think that triangle, everyone needs to be singing from the same hymn sheet, teachers, parents, students, teachers, parents, students. And that's what's gonna maintain that progress throughout the academic year. So it's a system that is accessible 24 seven. Uh, updates can happen throughout the academic year, okay? And uh, you as parents can see exactly what, what your children are doing well in and also what your children are still working on, okay? So you can see those objectives that they've succeeded in and you can also see those objectives which they're not yet uh, succeeded in, but something that they maybe want to work on in order to support them from home. Just talked about a little bit like that uh, just then. So it's, you know, there's a gap analysis feature on there, which is fantastic. It really helps our teachers plan and support students within the classroom. Uh, the amount of uh, granular level detail on analysis that it gives is fantastic and really ensures that we are resourcing each and every lesson to the best of our ability. It empowers you as parents. Um, so it's a tool that gives you, like I just said, 
you can see exactly what your children know and you can see exactly what they are still working on. What is also fantastic, you can change the language on the system to any language that you like. So if you want to read and in interpret things in your home language, there are over 100 languages that you can alter the system to. Okay, so I think that's really beneficial to you as well as parents, so you can actually convert that into a language of your choice. And what's really helpful with that is our end of year reports are uploaded on the system. They're uploaded in English, but you can convert them into a language of your choice as well, so that you can read them as well. And also it gives students ownership of their own learning. If they know exactly what their targets are, if they know what their strengths are, they really know what they need to work on as individuals. So why do we use it? It's really important for gap analysis. Again, just to find out what students know, what they don't know. It helps us to support and set personalized targets from the classroom teachers. And these targets will feed through at parents' evenings, parent consultations, our celebration events, and through the reports. It helps because it really gives you parental guidance. You have a, a really good oversight of what's going on in the classroom. You can see what students have been learning that week, that month that term, you can see what your children have been doing well in and what they need to focus on. Also, the system is fantastic. It actually gives parents articles. Now these articles um, support you as parents understand the objectives as well. So it tells you what it is, why it's taught in the national curriculum, how you can support at home, and it gives you some examples as well. If it's to support in terms of they're not understanding, or if it's to support in stretch and challenge, it gives you some really nice examples on that. It's, uh, it's aligned with our, our Arabic, Islamic and moral, social and cultural studies uh, curriculum, which is fantastic. So there's a lot of synergy there. It's very user friendly. It's quite easy to follow. OK, um, I'll probably do a session uh, in the coming weeks where I'll, I'll invite maybe when we're doing that in, in house or online and I'll go through and I'll now show you how to navigate the system and what you're looking for. So you have a good understanding of that as well. It's really bespoke to the school because, it, yes, it has got the national curriculum on there, but we can make edits uh, to that in terms of what we want for our school. So we can make personalised edits to those curriculum standards, which is fantastic. We can obviously track attainment and progress throughout the academic year at any point. OK, so it uh, ensures that accuracy, validity, validity as well. This is a big one, really actionable conversations can happen. So what we're trying to say is that we don't want you as parents to wait until parents evening for you to then find out how your students are performing in school. You should have it at your fingertips and learning ladders and seesaw ensures that you have it at your fingertips as well. So if you see something on that system and you've got a question about it, our doors are always open. It's really important to have that conversation with the classroom teacher so that we can support from home as well. And then it, as I just said, it, it involves all stakeholders. So everybody knows what's going on. Parents, leaders, teachers, students, everybody's in the know so that we can really support students moving through their learning journey in the primary school. Now I'm going to pass you back over to a bit of assessment in second group. OK, um, assessment then at the secondary level. If we talk from year seven up to year 11, we use what we would call um, a flight path. So please don't worry because there's a lot of uh, lot of stuff on that slide there and I'm going to break it down for you. But while I'm here and I will be sending this out to you um, as well. OK, so please don't worry. The slides will be coming out and there'll be some particular information for secondary as well. So basically what we're we're saying is that in year seven, your child will start to accumulate their GCSE grades. So if your child was to complete a GCSE paper, we would be able to assess them kind of where they are now in terms of the movement towards that GCSE. So you can see that we've we've highlighted it, we've coloured it. But if you if you look, which I think is the most important aspect, and I'll just move on to year seven so we can break this down. The blue section is working above the age-related expectations. Green is at working at, and then anything below that is working towards. You can see there that in year seven, if your child is able and they are evidencing that they are being awarded high level GCSE grades, then absolutely we will award them for that work. Okay. 
So there's no ceiling on the learning at all. And I think that's really important. So we've got a whole plethora there of grades where your child can, can access basically. Now in year seven, if you have a child that's just joined us in year seven, they all will be baseline this week and moving into next week. So a baseline is basically us gauging exactly where your child is. Now you will see those grades on a system I'll talk about more in a second called Go For Schools. You will see those grades. Expect those grades to be low if you're a parent in year seven because they're just starting out on their secondary journey. It's a baseline. And as Phil talked about before with progress, we measure progress from the baseline to their end points. So as we go through um, the school and the school year, your child will be assessed regular intervals. Okay, we have formal assessment drops. So again, I'll speak to you in a moment. The KA1, which is key assessment one, KA2, key assessment two, and we have our end of year as well. What I think for me is important information is where your child accesses this blank path is very individualized, okay? Each of your children here are different. And that's the way that we, you know, we're an inclusive school here at WEC. The progress that your child makes to a different child, you know, that's what matters is their progress. You know, and what we are expecting ideally is that they move down to one sub-level. So if, if you stay with me, if your child comes in and their baseline is a WT GCSE, which is a working towards GCSE, we would expect ideally that the next term they move to WT GCSE plus in term two. And then the next term we move to GCSE one minus. Now you all know your children, do they all move like that? Is that the way children work? Absolutely not, okay? It's not a linear progression. Some do, okay? Some do, some follow that rule of thumb, which is brilliant. But you will find in year seven that actually most of our students make accelerated progress. So if your child's baseline is a WT GCSE minus, at the end of the year seven, they could end up in the blue if they really worked and tried, okay? So it's flexible, it's fluid. And, I, you know, this isn't set in stone. Yes, we have our age-related expectations in green, but your child can figure anywhere in this. Right? We have to be open to that as well. So that's our year seven. And then if we home in there on year eight, you can see the green moves down a chunk, basically, from that big diagram. And then it moves down another chunk, again, in year nine. Okay, so again, I will send all of this out. And then in year 10 and 11, this is where we are really focusing on the child. So the green area, if you start in year seven in the green at the WT GCSE, the trajectory of that for year 10 and 11 would mean that we would expect your child to be getting at least a GCSE four, but also a GCSE five. That's what we are expecting. That's what we're pushing for, okay? We all know, and hope if you don't know, I, I'm going to do more sessions on this as well, but a really strong GCSE pass is a GCSE 6. Okay, so that's a strong one, but a pass is class as a 4 as well. Okay, so obviously the grades change to just whole grades in year 11, and that's what they'll be awarded because the way that we assess here at work is... You know, you'll know very soon on our teachers predict what they are going to get and we really want to push them. We have to be honest as well in our assessments. Okay, all of the students that received their results last week, there were no big surprises in there in terms of what, what they did achieve in terms of what their teacher and um, believed that they could get as well. So that is different for secondary. Yeah, so we work on the GCSE flight path. Reports that you get go for schools, okay, is, is up to date all the time. So basically it's live data. I'm going to ask you now, email addresses for parents for go for schools. You will need to start to log into this and it will only pick up the registered email address that you've given to our front of house team, the admin team. Okay, so if you would like multiple users to get the Go for Schools notifications and you know that maybe you need to do some updating with your admin, 
could I please ask you that on the way out today that you just check that all your email addresses are there because that is the one that gets registered into the Go for School system. Okay. So Go for Schools then is basically you will see your child's attendance, you will see their punctuality, you will see their house points, you will see any sanctions that they've got. All of your reports are on Go for Schools. Live data is on Go for Schools. It's absolutely an incredible tool. Now, this is what this is an example um, of what the first report would look like for some year groups. I'll explain that in a second. So you can see there you've got the subjects down the left. This was taken from last year. The MEG is the minimum expected grade. So that's what we believe at the end of that year your child should be getting, okay, the minimum. Teacher prediction, so that's what that your class teacher would, would predict. Now, just going back to class teachers, if you're transitioning from primary to secondary, subject teachers are the people you need to be asking. All right, form tutors to see your child every day, but in terms of being specific with specific questions, if you have a maths question, please ask the maths teacher. Yeah, so we will offer all of those email addresses out. Um, and again, this is live data. So in terms of there being no surprises to you, you will have access to this at all times. You do not need to wait for parents' evenings. Okay, so please, please take that away as well. KA1 was that key assessment one. Now, behaviour for learning, all right, so we have that meeting, exceeding, all right, and there's a key that goes with these reports, and then you have the teacher's name as well down the left, or down the right-hand side. We also have, obviously have the written reports that go out once a year, and I'll explain that soon. So that's kind of what um, you will get as a report. These are going to be sent out as well um, in terms of what it looks like for each year group, okay? So year seven, for example. The term one, the term two, the term three is all there for you to see. The dates have all been finalised. Generally, there are two parents' evenings every year. Okay. Year seven have three because their first one is what we call a meet the tutor evening to really, you know, start those relationships building and things like that. Um, and then you've got your key assessment dates. So year seven... They've got, if you look at the bottom of term one, they've got a data and behavior for learning report. And that's the example that I showed you. In term two, they have another data and behavior for learning report. However, in term three at the bottom, you can see that in year seven, their written report is at the end of the year. Okay. That's not always the case for every single year group. Okay. So for example, in year eight, the written report features at the end of term two. Just so you know there. And then for year nine, we actually do the written report in term one at the end because, as we know, or hopefully you will get to know that at the end of year, in, the, in year nine, sorry, in the middle of year nine, we choose options. So your child then in year 10 focuses and streamlines on the subjects that they want to. So in year nine, we meet you at the end of term one to make sure that you've got all the information ready for that. And then I won't go through these in too much detail, but there's our year 10. The written report is at the end of year 10. And obviously year 11 is very different. That report there for the written is in the end of term two, ready to prepare them for their GCSEs. Year 12 and 13, obviously that's our AS and A-levels. How many of you have got students going into year 12? Okay, so the GCSE flight path is null and void. GCM A levels, AS levels, they're all marked and grade A to E. Actually, I do apologize, A star to E. Now it's all being updated, which is wonderful. So that will um, follow just the normal grading system. It's, it's, a, it's a lot easier, I would say, up at up A level, but um, the progression and the units and the breakdowns are very different across the subjects. But I'm sure that you'll all get that information dependent on what your child is studying. For year 12, we also have this, so you can see um, we've got more reports for year 12 because they are a very, very important year group. We actually have four data points for them. And because as you can imagine, at the end of year 12, going into year 13, we have to be spot on in terms of them moving into year 13 in terms of their A-levels. And then we have year 13 as well, okay? 
Um, I know there's a lot of information here. We, Phil and I will do extra sessions on all of this, but we're trying to give you as much information to send you away um, as possible. But just to end with, from me, um, you know, looking at assessment, I kind of want to make sure that you all leave knowing that assessment is not just a sit down test. Okay, I think when I was at school, it really was. You have to do this, you have to sit down in silence and do this. Our teachers here at work are outstanding and the way that they assess is absolutely incredible. You know, the way that they have been taught, when, you know, through university, as they've come into school, the experience, the work that we do as leadership, it's everything, okay? It's the answers that a child gives. It's the comments that they're making. It's listening to them in a collaboration space. And that's academics, but socially, we've got the, you know, the ability to notice a very bubbly, normal child who comes in very sad one day. And that's our assessment to say, hang on, you all right? Is everything okay? So as teachers, all I can really say is that we're assessing all of the time, no matter, no matter what capacity as well, okay? And just to kind of finish off, there's a nice quote there that I like. So tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember, involve me as I learn. And I think as parents involving you today, involving you throughout the academic year, you know, you're, you, if you're new to it and you're sitting there thinking, oh my goodness, I promise you that you're going to get to grips to it. And me and Phil will sort, certainly support you with that. There's just some examples there, different um, assessments. So what I think we will do, it's um, not bad for time, 10.46. So the next session starts at 11. Rather than us taking questions um, openly, Phil and I will come downstairs. If you have any personal questions solely on curriculum or assessment, please come over um, and we'll chat to you and answer what we need. All right, guys, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.